Oi, oi, all right, all right. How's it going? I'm Grant. This is Doodle Review. And after a week of kind of hip hop centric reviews, we're going to pivot across to some US based indie looking at the posthumous release from Sparkle Horse. Like a few artists in the indie singer songwriter scene of the late 90s, Mark Linkhouse, songwriter, frontman, and founder of Sparkle Horse, was blessed with a very beautiful but tragic gift. Along with Mark E. Everett of Eels, Jason Pierce of Spiritualized, and Elliot Smith, Linkhouse had the ability to, to distill utter despair into songs so beautiful they couldn't help but romanticize sadness. And it's awful to think that two of the four names mentioned there would tragically take their own lives. It's like the catharsis they gifted to others in their music may have ultimately blinded audiences to the sheer depth of their depression. Bird Machine is so far the only posthumous release following Linkhouse's suicide in 2010 and is made from recordings being worked up with DIY producer Steve Albini for what would be the fifth Sparkle Horse record. The unfinished tapes were assembled and finished in the past year or so by Mark's siblings Matt and Melissa Linkhouse. What struck me about this record was just how much Linkhouse's influence has been undersold, particularly on the lo-fi kind of bedroom rock scene that was emerging around the time of his passing. The modern artist I kept coming back to, you know, listening to songs like I Fucked It Up, uh, listening to the Hicksons and Will It Never Stop was beach slacker Nathan Williams, AKA Waves. I was really into Sparkle Horse's collaboration with Danger Mouse when that leaked copy of that record was circulating the internet in 2009, but never really went further into his discography. So as someone with, I guess, limited knowledge or huge reverence for the artist, although a lot of respect, I do feel Bird Machine suffers with the inconsistencies that are typical of a posthumous record put together without you know, the original artist's vision to support the edit. There are a few tracks that echo each other in tone and oftentimes one is superior to a sibling, a la O Child and the Skull of Lucia or Falling Down and Daddy's Gone. In a world in which those at the helm were poised to deliver the most refined, succinct record rather than sadly giving fans as, as much of the artist's very finite remaining material as possible, a few of these songs may have been held back. That being said, there are some real incredible moments of songwriting here. Hello Lord with its lyrical conceit writing to God and asking how his kids are and chaos of the universe that trades a riff that swaggers for almost the same riff but an inverted delicate vocal version in the chorus are prime examples of what the world loses out on without Mark Linkhouse in it. The album is slightly less than the sum of its parts to me at a 6 out of 10 but there are in some incredible moments contained within for sure. Thanks for listening to me chat fraff about this record. The price you got to pay is really simple. You just got to drop me a subscription or drop me a note and or drop me a note below in the comments. You know, tell me, did I get this right? Did I get this wrong? Do you hate me? Do you not hate me? Do you hate this review? Do you like this review? Uh, what else? Show some love, share some thoughts or just tell some abuse in those comments below. Uh, there are links to other videos that you're definitely going to love below. So check those out. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, matrix, then bye.